नमस्कार वेलकम टू अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड इंपॉर्टेंट एडिटोरियल टुडे अरुण गोयल द इलेक्शन कमिश्नर रिजाइंड लेट्स टॉक अबाउट दैट लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड वाई ही पॉसिबली रिजाइंड लेट्स गेट राइट टू द शो यू सी अरुण गोयल द इलेक्शन कमिश्नर रिजाइनिंग इज like i i i i tweeted yesterday it's not just surprising it is very suspicious and why do i say suspicious i say suspicious is because the events just don't add up theek hai na the events just don't add up now let me start from the beginning and then you decide as always theek hai na now what happens is the government uh, passes a bill uh introduces a bill which becomes an act and that bill says that uh, the prime minister of india along with one union cabinet minister who incidentally is the law minister and uh, the leader of the opposition this trio will appoint the election commission election commission includes chief election commissioner and two election commissioners so three people Now, the whole world and its mother said, "Ye kya hai? What is wrong with you? Prime Minister and Union Minister, they are one. What value then is the opposition leader going to get to table? Because whatever the opposition leader will say, you will rule rule over and say two is to one, finish. Opposition leader over, his views gone the dustbin. You see, the court, the judiciary." had suggested that even the chief justice should be part of the decision making process now a lot of people including me let me tell you yours truly also said that listen judiciary aane se everything becomes clean everything becomes perfect everything becomes absolutely uh, uh, squeaky clean and and transparent and all iska koi necessary nahi hai there it's it's not necessary that it should happen because the same judiciary opposition leader and the prime minister appoints uh, the cbi director what happens is uh, is the cbi director absolutely impartial is the cbi absolutely impartial those questions we had asked but that being said at least there was a four corner which is opposition leader the judiciary the prime minister and even if the prime minister had included one more minister into the panel at least there would be two is to two at least there could be a stalemate in this case no stalemate prime minister decides the government decides why prime minister the government decides ye aadmi ko chief election commissioner banana hai that a man is the chief chief election commissioner theek hai now why would the government want to decide who which man becomes the chief minister the chief election commissioner or the election commissioner you see the government would want to decide because finally everything is decided by the election commissioner everything the date the 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 faces in which the election happens uh, who is saying right who is saying wrong is rahul gandhi whatever he says is is all illegal and what possibly the 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 uh, current dispensation says is all legal all this is decided by the election commission if there is a fight who gets the symbol who doesn't get the symbol election commission so election commission is the karta dharta of elections in india is a boss of elections in india now for a powerful ruling dispensation wouldn't it be very nice if the election commission is their person wouldn't it be very nice therefore i am not saying that that is what happened but i am asking you wouldn't it very be very nice for the government to have the election commission who somebody who reports to them theek hai chalo now this is one question that a lot of opposition also raised in the parliament a lot of opposition raised in the parliament theek hai chalo so this is what the election commission is this is how election commission is chosen now there was this gentleman called arun goel the election commission commissioner who resigned theek hai na let's talk about him and why i say that this entire resignation business no sounds a little suspicious i'll tell you why, why what i what i mean by that you see arun goel was working as secretary of the department of heavy industries 
before he retired under the voluntary retire scheme VRS on November 18th. Atran November ko he resigned. Resigned mane he took retirement, voluntary retirement under VRS scheme. One fine day. It is said that even the minister Mahindra Nath Pandey was not aware that his secretary was just taking voluntary retirement and going and saying tata bye bye and going. Okay, so he just left. He took voluntary retirement. Achha, now what happens is more surprising. On the 19th, that is the very next day, Arun Goel was appointed as the election commissioner. So from heavy industries, he takes voluntary retirement 18th. Next day morning, he gets in as chief election commissioner. This did not only surprise us, but this surprised even the Supreme Court, where the Supreme Court asked the center to produce original files related to the sections because they too were surprised as to what, what, how this lightning speed may you appoint a election commissioner. So what does this prove? This proves that Arun Goel was somebody who was handpicked by the center because the chances for a IAS officer, IAS officer, if I'm not mistaken, he is an IAS officer of 1985 batch. An IAS officer of 1985 batch, which means a very seasoned bureaucrat, for a seasoned bureaucrat to all of a sudden one fine day saying that, okay, I want to take uh, voluntary retirement and I am going to go, I am going Tata from today and without even informing, without even the minister knowing about it, it takes voluntary retirement, next day morning sits as election commissioner. It is not that easy, no? It is not, it can't be coincidence, right? So there could have been some planning. If there is a planning and that is how he has sat there, which means that the people in power, people who can make him sit there, is aware of this or wanted him to be sitting there, which means that the center wants him to be sitting there. This much I can conclude. TK, let me go to the next step. Now, he was the election commissioner. He was working peacefully. One never heard any conflict except for some conflict with the with his uh, with his boss, the chief election commissioner. Except for one or two squabbles here, uh, one didn't hear much. I will talk about the squabbles also. I'll come to that. But one didn't hear much about him having any problem, especially with the government. Who wanted him there? Or the, the top people in the current dispensation, current government who wanted him there. There were no squabbles, there were no problems, at least not to, not in public. Chalo. Now, why does it, is resignation uh, surprise more? Because, you see, even if he had squabbles with Mr. Rajiv Kumar, that is the chief election commissioner. You see, 2025, February, he would have been promoted as a chief election commissioner. He had all the uh, qualification to get promoted as chief election commissioner. And mind you, there was no second chief election commissioner. There were, I told you, know, there was one chief election commissioner and then two election commissioners. There was only one election chief election commissioner and one election commissioner. The second election commissioner is the position is lying vacant. So by all possible means, Mr. Goel would have been the next chief election commissioner in a matter of another one year. A person... To the best of my knowledge, having dealt with uh, zillions of, of, of bureaucrats, IAS officers throughout my career, I have not seen an IAS officer throw away everything just because he was cutty with his boss. I said, I have not seen Unless and until there is a major issue, unless and until some major problem, unless and until some major thing and the officer knows that this is going to haunt him for the rest of his career and all, then ja there is resignation resignation. Hota hai. Just because he knows the boss is there for another 12 months. But 12 months, why would somebody want to resign? Why would somebody want to resign? 85 batch officer. You see the career that uh, uh, Mr. Goel had. So why would he want to resign? This is the question I ask. These are things why I said that it all looks suspicious. Now, when I am saying suspicious, I, I mean it is beyond surprise is what I would say. Let me also clarify that term. See, the point is that a lot of, what, a lot of people say a lot of things. Now, there is one news that came through which says that, listen, he had a problem with uh, the CEC uh, when it came to the way West Bengal was handled, the way things happened in West Bengal. 
and the way the decisions were taken in west bengal possibly against uh, mamata banerji or whatever hindustan times in fact has a full fledged article where they say that listen you know what um, नहीं ऐसा नहीं है दिस इज नॉट द केस हिंदुस्तान टाइम सेज दैट द की पॉइंट ऑफ डिफरेंस वॉज ओवर द पोल बॉडीज फेब्रुवरी सेवनटीन ट्वेंटी ऑर्डर ऑन द एलोकेशन ऑफ शिवसेना पार्टी नेम एंड पोल सिंबल टू एक नाथ शिंदे फैक्शन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ लेजिस्लेटिव मेजोरिटी फोर ऑफिशियल्स टोल्ड एच टी फोर ऑफिशियल टोल्ड दिस टू एच टी मेजर प्रॉब्लम हिंदुस्तान टाइम्स दे से दैट मेजर प्रॉब्लम दैट ऑफिसर ऑफिशियल टोल्ड इज दैट दिस वॉज बी रिगार्डिंग दैट एक नाथ शिंदे एंड उद्धव ठाकरे प्रॉब्लम वेर यू नो द सिंबल वॉज गिवेन इन टू एक नाथ शिंदे विच पॉसिबली मिस्टर गोयल वॉज नॉट वेरी हैप्पी अबाउट सम हाउ आई एम नॉट कन्विंस्ड आई एम नॉट कन्विंस्ड आई एम नॉट कन्विंस्ड फॉर द सिंपल रीजन दैट लॉजिक देखो द पर्सन हु वॉज अपॉइंटेड a person who was hand picked from heavy industries appointed as election commissioner was not happy with a decision that possibly went in favor of the same people who appointed him does that sound right the fact remains that he put up his resignation and the very next day the resignation was even accepted by the by the president of india that too is kind of very strange so the fact remains that there has to be something larger to this there has to be something where there is been some kind of a difference of opinion with the government who appointed him this is what i presume then the reason why i presume this is because it is only the government that mr goel have to stay for next 3 years it is only the government of india because finally the the cc who he, he claims to have problems with will go in next 12 months not even 12 months actually 11 months he will go he has to deal with the government of india so if he has a problem with the government of india then baba yes then he will resign so i would assume that this resignation is because there was some kind of a conflict between him and the government of india now could that be because of uddhav thakre possible but why why so much so because of uddhav thakre and if it was why wasn't that ever aired why wasn't there a voice of dissent why wasn't there uh, 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 like what mr lavasa did why wasn't there a note of dissent there was no note of dissent in this case it was all done through straight if there was a problem with west bengal why was there no vote of dissent or note of dissent where he said that baba i don't agree to this or i do agree to this he has all the right to why wasn't there a the note of dissent so that is another that is the point that i wanted to raise through this now what happens next what happens next is there is one cec chief election commissioner now under him two election commissioners have to be appointed for all practical reason it will be done by the prime minister and uh, the government the prime minister will finally decide with one union minister as to this person this person this person will be appointed ha huh. mr kharge malikarjun kharge has all the right to oppose but his opposition till such time that the union minister doesn't oppose to the prime minister decision or the prime minister doesn't oppose to the union minister decision which will which is as good as no not going to happen it will be the prime minister who will decide the next election commission i just want to take you through one small point before i conclude my show is where uh, i want to read a, a a a small paragraph to you where this from a letter and then i'll tell you the, the who wrote the letter and to whom the letter was written and all later on i will just read a small paragraph to you the paragraph says the present system whereby members of the election commissions are appointed by the president solely on the advice of prime minister does not evoke confidence amongst the people keeping these important decisions as an exclusive preserve for the ruling party renders the selection process vulnerable to manipulations and partisans indeed the credibility of the system was severely dented when a dubious appointment of a crucial office of cec was made a few years ago the time has therefore come to reform the selection process of the ec and other constitutional bodies as has indeed been done in the case of the cvc at cic you know this letter was written by 
Sri L K Advani when he was a member of parliament, and he had written this letter to Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, wherein he said that listen, you know what, ये election commission का जो चुनाव है ना, you know the way you are going to choose election chief election commissioners and election commissioner, this cannot be a prime minister's decision. This cannot be the ruling party's decision because it will sound partisan, man. How can you allow that to happen? The entire process will lose lose credibility and and confidence of the people. He said, "Listen, there has to be a process put into place, like you are doing CVC, like you are doing CIC, wherein you had uh, opposition leader, you have uh, the prime minister, and you have the chief uh, uh, justice of India involved." He says, "That's the way it has to be done," and. Uh, Otherwise, you know, people will not have confidence, and that's precisely what's happened, and that's precisely what's going to happen in the next couple of days. You will very soon have a chief election commissioner and an election commissioner. You already have a chief election commissioner and two new election commissioners selected by the union minister and the prime minister, with the opposition leader agrees. If he agrees, if he doesn't agree, also. not make much of a difference this is the point i wanted to make one more 3 minutes story before i end my show now on the electoral bonds the chief justice of india and the supreme court has ordered sbi to share the information with the court by the 12th of march no extension they said will be granted so the extension given to sbi technically was from 6th of march which they were supposed to to the 12th of march this is what the extension was given and uh, while uh, arguing this case the sbi's lawyer mr harish salve he said you see the problem with uh, challenge that they faced the bank faced was in reconciling donors detail and redemption details which were stored in separate information silos he said he so he asked and said that we need a little more time to comply with your lordship's order this is what he said to which justice chandrachud said listen what you are asking is that there are two different information silos and rematching them would requires significant effort if you see the direction we issued we did not ask you to do this matching exercise we have simply directed plain disclosure the grounds on which you seek additional time do not accord at all with the direction we issued this was a, a very very apt answer what he said is hum bola tha ke i want it in this format or that format did the court say the court asked you to give all information that you have disclose all information that you have this is what the court asked sbi we didn't say that put it in this format and that format and this design and that design all we didn't ask we said simply de do so what is the problem you have it in in different silos two silos if it is in two silos give it in two silos we will figure out this is what has been told to sbi now sbi will have to disclose by the 12th of march if they don't then it will be a contempt of court and they will have to face that cha those charges now the fact is also like i told you before now let us see in what format will sbi uh, present to the court and the format that sbi present to the court how can that be deciphered so that common people common people like you and me can actually see it understand what the what the data is who paid what who are the donors how much money was paid to what party whether we can decipher that whether we can understand that or will the entire uh, data be jumbled and uh, and something that nobody will be able to understand This is something will be very interesting for us to note. Let's wait till twelfth of March to find that out, and uh, I'll be back with you on twelfth of March on this particular issue, and uh, of course with my next editorial tomorrow at ten p.m. Till then, namaskar. Stay ahead with our cutting edge news app. Instantly access the latest shots in just one minute and breaking news in just fifty words. Download now for a smarter, faster news experience.